Thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. My name is Osi Godwin, and I've got my co anchors with me, Ife Oluwa Oshunkeye, and Ife Omai. Hello, everyone. It's good, man. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. Right, well, well, well. I'm as bright as my look. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let me turn it down a bit, because. Um, <laughs> Play veteran... shine, girl. Flourish. Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Veteran high life singer Victor Laia has died at the age of 89 at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. His death was confirmed by Michael Odiong of Premier Music, um, the record label that holds his music repertoire. According to Odiong, he died around noon on Wednesday, February 12, 2020. The entertainment industry has lost a great music icon, Victor Olaya. According to a statement by his label, Evergreen Music Company, its managing director, Bimba Eshaw, announced the death of the legend of high life. She also wished his family and the entire music community the fortitude to bear this irreplaceable loss. The music legend passed away on Wednesday, 12th February 2020, at Lute Hospital, Lagos State, at the age of 89. He retired from his long music career in 2017 and had some hit tracks, one of his most recent works was when he featured with Two Face in the remix of Baby Mida. To this great and amazing icon, we say rest in peace. Rest in peace. I would say this is a celebration of life, actually. Mm. We're not he was born to be in 1930. So oh, he's 89, right? Yeah. So mm. he lived well, he yeah. impacted. Um, one of his mm. songs I like is the one titled Something On Your. On your <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's not get to it. Oh, Lord, your Yeah, so that's, that's it. And um, are we doing some seconds of silence? Yeah, of course, sure. we have to. So rest in perfect place. Amen. If a <laughs> dramatic much. Okay, but this is a man who has um, largely impacted the industry, and um, so many of the we'll get to it now. Our best and no best. They were mm -hmm. <laughs> inspired by people like him, yeah. and they started the music thing when there was no industry. Talk more of not talk of thinking of structure, you know. Yeah. So um, his um, band was called. I can't remember the first name they had now, but I know they changed it at some point to All Stars. Mm. And he was active till 2017, if I'm mm. not mistaken. So, I mean, he lived well and yeah, he impacted the lives um, and his, his music would, yeah. Yeah, it's transcended times and um, he's still vibe to it. It will still always be a vibe. So mm -hmm. it's just nice that he's also left us with something that mm -hmm. we can hold on to. We can even pass on to our kids. Like, I feel like that's always going to be a jam. Yeah. Aside that, um, he also was able to cut across for the sound remix of um, Baby Me Down with Two Faces mm -hmm. Baby, which he did, I think, in 2013. 2013, yeah. Yeah, in 2013. Mm -hmm. And um, coincidentally, um, we'll be having a Valentine's special, and we're, um, we're having a top five love songs, and that song happened to be on our list. And then um, it really breaks my heart that I put him on that list, and um, just a few days for us to celebrate him as one of the greatest love songs, and... Um, is gone so that's really sad and um, may so rest in peace and i just hope his family can find comfort wherever they may be and everybody that he has influenced and impacted the whatever way um keep the flag flying and um keep his legacy alive that's all i can say okay so moving on to the next story for conversation Snoop Dogg sends apology to Gil King in an Instagram video post um, shared on Wednesday. Snoop Dogg said, two wrongs don't make no right. When you're wrong, you got to fix it. So with that being said, Gil King, I publicly tore you down by coming at you in a derogatory manner based off of emotions of me being angry at a question you asked. 
I overreacted. I should have handled it way different than that. I was raised way better than that. So I would like to apologize publicly for the language that I used and calling you out, um, calling you out your name and just being disrespectful. I did not mean for you to be like that. I was just expressing myself for a friend that wasn't here to defend himself. Snoop Dogg was furious that um, Gil King brought up rape allegations from Brand's past interview with um, her interview with Lisa Leslie. Kobe Brand was killed in a helicopter car crash. A helicopter crash last month along with his young daughter and um, seven others. Mm. Right. So um, I think Snoop Dogg is just being a bigger man. And like you said, two wrongs don't make a right. And um, at the end of the day, 50 Cent said the right thing that for those that would ignore the message and pick the words, he used a lot of foul words when he was addressing this. but. There's absolute truth in everything Snoop Dogg said and everything he was trying to address because um, Gil King was trying to bring down the legacy of a man that was great and isn't there. Okay, I see, I see Omar is already getting, you know, <laughs> when she has this conjuring moves, but before she starts her analysis, let's take a look at the video. Coming at you live and direct with a message. Two wrongs don't make no right. When you're wrong, you gotta fix it. So with that being said, Gail King. I publicly tore you down by coming at you in a derogatory manner based off of emotions, me being angry at questions that you asked. Um, overreacted. I should have handled it way different than that. Uh, I was raised way better than that. So I would like to apologize to you publicly for the language that I used and calling you out of your name and just being disrespectful. I didn't mean for it to be like that. I was just expressing myself for a friend that wasn't here to defend himself. Um, a lot of people look up to me and they love me and they appreciate me, so I want to let them know that. Anytime you mess up, it's okay to fix it. It's okay to man up and say that you're wrong. I apologize. Hopefully we can sit down and talk privately. Have a good day. All right, so... You fell my... No, no, let me oh, just... Oh, you were not done. You know, I was okay. in, I was mm -hmm. in um, She has... Um, own I version of mm. the story, but let me just keep going. Um, Girl King was trying to bring down the legacy of a man because she was asking some funny questions for a man that couldn't defend himself. And I think it's become a norm for Girl King and Oprah to be doing this. I oh understand that. God. Hold on. I, I understand that they're, um, they're trying to practice journalism and you don't have to be biased when it comes to your questions and all of that. By the end of the day, um, Kobe Bryant was never convicted of any of those allegations that were brought against him in the first place. So um, I, even if you want to do that, I just felt it was too soon for you to be insistent. Because even when um, Leslie, the lady in question, was talking about um, Kobe Bryant and how much of, he is a great guy and she has other basketball players that would go after ladies and do derogatory stuff to ladies and all of that, but she said she never saw Kobe in that light. <laughs> she never saw him. Do that. Just because you don't hold see on, someone. Hold on. And then Leslie was, and Gil was like, uh, "You won't see that though. He's your friend. Do you understand? Like, that's what are facts. You, no, no. It's not about being facts. You're trying to get words out of a lady that has told you that she didn't see. The fact that you don't see, she didn't see. So and it's okay. And she's just stating the facts that okay, you don't have to see. That's all. Okay, can I come in here? Are you, are you done? Yeah, go on. Okay, so before you come in, because I feel like when you start, <laughs> we're going to leave this topic entirely. <laughs> um, for this apology from Snoop Dogg, I think, like Ife rightly said earlier, it's, um, it shows how mature he is. And he talked about having a conversation with his mom, and he realized that he could have done it in a better way. So he's not apologizing for calling her out. Yeah. He's just saying his that message is on point. he could have um, said it in a better way and not use the whole curse word because a lot of people look up to him and he should live um, by example, you know. So um, I understand where he's coming from. And of course, I saw so many reactions. They were like, you don't need to apologize for anything. You didn't do anything. She deserved it and blah, blah, blah. But this is a man who has lived so many decades and he's telling you, you know what? I did it in the wrong way. I could have... Um, put my message across without calling her out of her name or using any derogatory terms on her. So I, I appreciate that he's doing this. And he said one thing, when you know you've done something wrong, it is your responsibility to apologize Definitely. and um, fix up. I think
think a lot of black men especially can take cues, cues from that. There's many, many men, not even half the size of um, um, Snoop Dogg that haven't achieved, months, haven't achieved much. You can call them scumbags for lack of a better word and they can't even see themselves apologizing for something that's evidently wrong. And I think uh, it's a really good example of a thug like <laughs> man, you know, just being respectful. Um, so kudos to him for that. Uh, I, I don't know, obviously I wasn't here when Kobe died and all that, and there was a lot of um, noise around his death. I think one thing people need to understand is that not everyone saw Kobe as a great guy, and that's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. not, not everyone, everyone can like you. Let me finish because guy. I do not interrupt you. So um, everyone didn't see him as that, and you have, to, you have to understand that that case was dismissed. Mm -hmm. Not that it was, he was proven innocent or that he was proven guilty. It was dismissed. There's a lot of reasons why a case can be dismissed. He's not here anymore, yes, but the victim is still alive. Her family is still alive. So if they feel like, I don't think that because somebody has died, then they, you, they need to um, silence that voice. I've always been and I'll always be a champion or a voice for people who are being oppressed for whatever reason that is. Um, and you can say that that case is already like a power play in terms of him being a celebrity and him being powerful and she's like an underage young girl. So um, I think that people are allowed to have that. As a journalist, someone that is not biased, it is okay to ask that question because no, as, soon as, as soon as he, he um, died, there was a lot of people coming out. It wasn't just Gail. A lot of people coming out to say that, um, you know, insensitive rest in peace. Um, but you cannot say it's sensitive. What, the, what about the victims? Um, I think the smartest thing for Gail, for me, would have been for her not to even say anything at all. But that she did say, I don't think it's wrong. I just think she, I, I, I'm not, I cannot imagine that she wouldn't know that this type of backlash would be there. And then she also responded, which we didn't talk about, yeah. well, no, and gave I'm her gonna, perspective I'm go, I'm as things. well. And she, and she also made it clear to people that it wasn't that she wanted to diminish his legacy. It is part of his legacy. She did not bring something up that's a lie. Mm -hmm. Diminishing somebody's legacy will be saying that, did you know he raped someone and we've never heard of that? This was in court. This is out there. The people are still alive, her friends and family. The, the whole system that were in support of that was still alive. So all she did was bring up a very obvious and strained um, incident that's happened in his life. It's the same mm. thing with um, Michael Jackson and all the others. Which just is because somebody Oprah. is is perfect, don't, um, but just because you like somebody doesn't mean that they are perfect, that's what I'm trying to say. Mm. All right, so um, talking about what Girl King also said in her apology, she also said that um, she was talking about um, NBC, was it NBC or ABC? NBC, CBS. Yeah? CBS, sorry, that um, a network, she doesn't know why they put that out there. She was also offended that people Yeah, because they took that. it out of context, From, no, not no, because no, no, she no, didn't no, say no, it. Because they, no, 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 because they took it out of context, they did not because take they it used out of just context. that part. I don't know yes, if that that's that had, taking out I, of context, I remember that's what I'm that means. Say, I said it on this table. <laughs> I also do not know why she was going at her network, because you granted an interview. So it was there. Yeah, but you, take, you can take things out of there. context to make it, it look bad. Taking it out of context. It was not their fault that people decided to take it out of context. You could wait to watch the you full interview. You literally took a bit out of a it. full context. That's what it means to take something out of context. So because now you're saying it was part of On Twitter, it looked like she brought her friend. You're not going to blame CBS for the brain that people on Twitter has. Hold on, let me explain something. So you're saying it is fine for her to ask that question and do all she did. And I mean, it's a conversation. Yes. But you're saying it is wrong for her to ask that question and do all she did. And I mean, it's a conversation. Yes. But you're saying it is wrong. For the network to take that no, part. I'm not saying, because I'm you not also saying, felt what I'm you not, did was stupid. That's the only wrong. reason why you'll be I'm blaming not, the network. I'm not saying it, it is wrong for CBN to put that out there. When when I was on Twitter when that story broke, mm -hmm. it looked like she brought that girl in to ask her about Kobe's rape allegation. And that was not the case. Was it's that a 15 minute interview. You know what? They brought did out you? a three minute section mm -hmm. from all the other good things that they talked about. That is what, did that you, is the did definition you, did you hear of what taking things out of context. Did you hear That's what she said in her apology? She said, if I had seen that part too, I would be mad at me. Because she knew that was very, very wrong. And it's not, it's that, that, she's not saying, she's not apologizing for what she said. She's apologizing that people are only seeing one aspect of her looking like she's tearing Kobe down. And that's mm. not what she did. She well, said she celebrated the guy in the whole 15 minutes and only like that three to, minutes was about the rape. There's nothing yeah, wrong with that. I would like that. to, I mean, for Twitter, Twitter can take between two minutes, 20 seconds to four minutes, 20 seconds, depends on the kind of account you have. Yeah. yeah? So I can't remember for the life of me now what's the caption 
of that tweet was. But if the caption was clear and saying, this is a part of an interview, then it is fine. But you, everybody fair. knows it's a part you of an go, interview. If everybody knows People it's a part of an interview and they decide to, to take that. it out of context, why are you blaming a network? That's she's what I'm not, saying. She's just saying that it looks... It's like what we were talking about yesterday about the headlines. Mm -hmm. the, the head, the, those guys that were blaming women That's about, blaming about, about, about things. Is that... Wait, wait. Wait, mm -hmm. I, I grant an interview as a woman. Mm -hmm. I talk about my single life. The the in, the network or whatever decides to put that one thing into but as the heading. You know, is that taking things out of context? Granted, no, it's you not. We also agreed an interview. That's no, a difference. It's the same also, thing, if it. But we also agreed that there is nothing wrong in choosing whatever headline you want to choose, but we have to do better in changing the narrative and yeah. saying better things about the gender and mm -hmm. balancing it. So, I mean, would you not say that saying, in that same light? No, no, what she was focus, saying. Let's really okay. focus on the topic, which is Snoop Dogg apologizing. apologizing. And I've said my piece on it. I we think you have, have also. Yeah. And I don't know if you did, but yeah. We need to go on a very quick break. But when we return, um, Bonner Boy is talking again, but all that will be right after this break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? <laughs> <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Minimal mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. This is Tilti Time on Plus TV Africa. Bonaboy took to his Twitter page on Wednesday to say, and quote, I always knew I was and I am the best. Everyone. Everyone you think is the best knows I am the best since Felakuti. But Timaya told me something a long time ago that made me not care about um, being the best. The world can do without the best. Um, the world will spin, will still spin regardless. End of quote. Responding to a Twitter user who reminded him that he, um, that the best in the industry paved way for him and that he came in when the table was already set. He said, quote, LOL, nobody paved whatever for me everybody they find them on i have been out there if you knew the way they made us look weak by begging and paying the western world to like us you will see that no table was set and i'm the one that brought you the respect you currently enjoy end of quotes this comes from a cocky place well i didn't know that was the memo <laughs> mm. wait, 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 i need to drink my own tea stop <laughs> laughing so i can't <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, who goes first? Hmm. Okay, you guys want to go? Mm -hmm. All right, so. <laughs> it is much as I love Bonner Boy. We say it's okay to um, blow your own trumpet because nobody will do it for you, right? But um, not when you're a public figure. We understand that you're doing great things. We understand that you've done a lot of things. We understand that you got the Grammys. We understand that you're getting us the international recognition, but... Saying nobody paved the way for you, that's a lie. People pave the way for everyone in every industry. Talking about people begging for the wet, no. Bonner Boy came in in 2010 with uh, Like to Party. Before Like to Party, before we he can even vibe to a song like Like to Party, we've had people like uh, LD the Don giving us mm. such vibe. We've had people like Ferocious giving us such vibe. We've had people like Tribesmen giving us such vibe. Do you understand? So you cannot tell me nobody paved the way for you. We've had people like Brimo giving us the Afrobeat sound. Mm. We've had people like whiskey doing the afrobeat sound so for you to even thrive in that type of genre or in that type of style is because people have done it and then you did it maybe Don't you forget did the bunch the bunch thank mm. you very much um who else who else we can we can meet dr seed he tunes that like they one the cool there are a lot of people that we can call that paved the way for bonner boy so right now i just feel like okay 
I think everybody, everything they've been saying about him is just totally true. Like they say, he's proud. Is this? Is that? Is this? Is that? But bro, you need to look. Somebody paved the way for everyone. Do you understand? For every single person. So you saying you're the best? This, this, that. Auntie Maya is a is is a genius. He saw the future by telling you that. Look, the world would do without the best. So if you think because we're giving you all the accolades right now, we could stop buying your CD. We can stop doing a lot of things with you. Then go to the America where you think you have paved the way for us there <laughs> and go and be selling your records. Do you understand? Like, that's, this is totally BS as far as I'm concerned because you shouldn't have even said any of these things. I, I totally lost respect for Bonner Boy after I read it. It was so funny because yesterday we were, we were literally just, and I was like, mm. I like the man, but in terms of like most influential, like I hope it's not his words because he, he cacks BS all the time. Um, first of all, what is the As best BS in like, <laughs> what is the best? Who gave you that accolade? I mean, you haven't won anything that I know of that is stating that you mm -hmm. are the best. What is on that ground? You know, delusions of grandeur is what I think this man has. And it's, it's, it's so tricky because he's actually very talented. Usually people who have delusions of grandeur think that they're, you know, the, the it, but they're not. But this person is actually, in a way, the person, but he thinks he's more than the thing that he is, if that makes sense. Um, and I think he's gas. My, my, when I saw it's that tweet, really I, I first thought, thought about that. Wow, your alcohol is a lot, one. Two, it just made me think, like, maybe this man is surrounded by people who hype him yes, man. so much. Yes, man. It's, it's surrounded by I've yes, worked men. With, I've worked with celebrities, and I know that they are so drifted from reality that even when they talk with a lot of confidence, to me, as a civilian, it makes absolutely no sense. Like, they don't, even simple things like, how long would it take for you to get from toll gates to, to Northern Foreshore? The little details like that. And I think that's something that's wrong with him. He's a, getting a bit, his reality is getting a bit skewed. And you can see in, in his text messages. Getting blurry. I would tell him to <laughs> calm down, understand that, yeah, you are super talented, but first of all, what is the best? And how, how, how do you, you think that you are the, the best? best? Um, not everyone will vibe to your music. It's not every music that everybody likes. Um, you can't you can't be everybody's um, Best. you know bestie. One, two, to think that to say that we are currently enjoying the whatever. <laughs> what happened to okay? David? What, what happened, happened to, to Whitney? When he signed to, to good like, music with Kanye West? The band is even far. Like let's talk about the people just right before you. Where were where were you when all of that stuff he was, was happening? Up. And then he says, compared himself to Fela. I'm just like, do you know how much gap is between you and Fela and how much success has been I can't wait for Sean Kuti to reply him because I know Sean Kuti will not um, But what I would say to uh, Bonaboy is pretty simple. Like, if you have to say, I am the king, then maybe you're really not the king. Yeah. It's just like when people come out and say, I'm the man, then check yourself. Are you really... Do you know what? Yeah. This so just brings me back to the... He needs to maybe hand over his phone again because I remember he came out to say... I was going to say that. His, Instagram. Now so he needs to drop Twitter. I mean, he needs to really stop and just be in the studio. And do you know what? This and let just... your PR firm do their job because mm -hmm. the fact that you're on, on all these platforms and all these shows, if you were not seen and signed, there will be no PR team that will be behind you to push you as much. And I feel like Bonaboy is one of those talents that refuse to acknowledge the team they have. Yeah. The only person mm -hmm. that he really acknowledges is his mom. Mother. Yeah. And maybe if he if she wasn't his mom, then we probably wouldn't have known her, her who the her. manager is or who is doing all this job. So I mean, you are Bonner boy. You are the artist. You are the talent. But um, just being Bonner boy and just throwing into the water, we are just going to be like any other uh, um, yeah. good talent from Mushi or Joel Embada mm -hmm. is trying to break through. So, you know, so there's so many people walking around and behind you to make you who you are. Don't come and. Um, what's the lack of, in fact, there's no better word. Don't, don't you know, that word on them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, try to understand. Like, so many people have done a lot for you to even have mm. the kind of industry you have right now. Yeah. So, And it needs to know. be super careful. There's, there's clear evidence in history about people who have attitudes like this. You don't go far, no matter how talented yes, you think you are. Do you know what? This just brings me to the lady that um, when they lost the Grammy that said um, she didn't want mm -hmm. him to win the Grammy because she's she happy would, that, yeah. that he didn't win because she feels that this would um, affect mm -hmm. his... Um, what? Ego. How did she put it? His ego. His or something. ego. Yeah. She, she put it in the type Who's of... Who's the person? Um, uh, so Moji... Or, I can't remember the name for the life of me, so don't let me say it. But the lady said she's glad because she feels that if he had one, it would affect his character, it would affect this. So you didn't even win, you lost, and then you're being this cocky. Mm -hmm. Come on. 
And uh, is it just me, or did it look like he was also bringing out Timaya? Because if you say that you are the best, and you mention another artist in your court, so you're also saying that you're better. Timaya, uh, was one of those who saying that you're better than than, than Timaya that. as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said something earlier, on, like there is no best. You could be the fact that even we if you like have to Bonaboy's say you're the music, best, and you're not the best. People who don't like your music or yeah. who just wake up in the morning and stream your music. Yeah. So he should um, pay accolades to those who deserve it. I think he needs to take a cue from Davido, especially. I think like, that's somebody I know that's the complete opposite. Like you can see that he's with his team. He appreciates his name. Down or to whiskey. The, the, or whiskey. Mm, yeah, I don't know about that, but somebody who. <laughs> 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 Somebody who like hey, no. down to the person that does the keys on the notes or mm -hmm. so he gives them a chain, he gives them little things just to show that okay, you know, I respect you, I respect your work and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Um mm -hmm. Bonaboy needs to just wake up a bit. I think we need to sing a song for Bonaboy. Mm. There's, a part, there's a part of his mm -hmm. tweets that I'm trying to remember. Maybe we can so have G. that back on the screen. And it's it kind of contradicted himself again towards the last part. I would like Where to he have said the, the um the the that we're enjoying the respect he gave us the what we're enjoying something now is before best. that okay so um nobody came to the way. way they made us look oh so it means that some people have, have been worked. trying yeah they have worked for you to say if you knew the way they made us look yeah. you acknowledge that but you're saying no you're talking your, about those other artists that's like what i'm saying this. now in his mind they did not go but about it the right, the right way, way but they still gave them gave him that part but it means that they already worked they tried they did something maybe it is not the way you are doing it now. Who are you to even doors, say that they're cocky. begging? For God's sake, you applied for a Grammy. I what, beg. What if you are close to Bonaboy right now, in? if you are close to I mean, him you right have now. to apply to tell them, see my work. Uh, oh, Abio, you like, your standards. Uh, you know? Please, <laughs> so you are nah, begging. Let me just tell the people close to him right now. Nah, come something. Uh, <laughs> nah, come something. Okay, I bet you should knock him we something. We have another very interesting topic, but time would not permit us. We will definitely do that on the next episode. So thank you for watching. And if you're just joining us, then you just have to head over to our YouTube channel, Applause TV Africa. Also subscribe um, to get all this and other exclusive content. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co and course, <laughs> Ife Omai and Ife Oluo Shoke, and the entire production team. Thank you so much for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Stay with us and do have yourselves a great day.